Hi. Let's talk about a kingdom of flesh and fire. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Liz, and I love to talk about books, primarily Sarah J. Mass, but since Hofast came out, I've been trying to move on, and I've been in a really bad slump, and I still am, but I'm trying to push through, and I finally started a new fantasy series from Blood and Ash. My previous video was me reading that one, and now we are on to Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I originally had planned for this to be a reading vlog, but over the last couple weeks, my camera stopped working. It would record for like six seconds and then stopped working. I finally got it to work again, but I have since finished the second book and I'm actually almost done with the third one. So we're just gonna go through my annotations that I made for A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire to kind of re amp my thoughts and be able to talk about that with you guys because I really wanted to do the vlog like I feel like that's so fun to watch but I can't help it so let me pull up my notes and set the stage for you all right so we finished from blood and ash Castile has basically taken Poppy hostage. We find out that Castile was Hawk the whole time and the major plan was to kidnap Poppy since she is the maiden and bargain with the Ascended for her freedom to get Castile's brother Malik free. The Ascended currently have his brother and are using him to make more Ascended because he is Atlantean and in order to make an Ascended you need Atlantean blood. As far as I'm aware, I swear that my brain is not remembering every single thing about the Atlanteans and the Elementals and the Wolven, but I'm doing my best. So we start out with Poppy being in a really bad place mentally. I mean, she literally thought that Hawk was this like great guy. So if you watched my last video, you know that my like major issue with From Blood and Ash, like it would be with any series, is that Castile, he was naughty. He took advantage of her. And as I also said before, I know that the point of that scene where they sleep together is that it's her choice and that she wanted to, but that still doesn't make it okay because the only reason she wanted to is because she thought she trusted him. And so I personally struggled a lot in the beginning because I knew that obviously this book was gonna be like a redemption for him and I just couldn't see how he would redeem himself. But that's my fault. Like I am such a hard-headed person. I hold grudges and that's not good. But we'll get into more of kind of what I think of him now at the end. So the first thing that I have annotated is actually on the first page and something that I really appreciate about this part of the book is that Poppy really does go through this like mental struggle of whether or not to forgive Castile, whether or not to hate him. And I think that's kind of, as readers, we get that. Like we get the whole, well, I love him, but I hate him and I don't want to forgive him, but he has my heart and blah, blah, blah. So what I had annotated was how she's looking at him and she's seeing his face and his lips and something she says is, these are lips that had also spoken blood-soaked lies. She is grieving. Like not only is she grieving Victor and the fact that Castile literally had a play in that, like yes, he didn't do it himself, but people went after them in his name. And oh, like I can't even imagine that. Like imagine looking at someone and being like you, like people killed my people because of you, like in your honor. And so I appreciate that, that she's actually thinking to herself like, yeah, like you lied to me, you're a liar. Because one of my pet peeves is when there's like an enemies to lovers and they become lovers so quickly and you're like, come on, like, can you just hate each other for a little bit? Or like most of the book, please. So I loved that she actually wrote it that way. And he's telling her, you know, we are, we're gonna go home, we're gonna get married and you're gonna be a princess. And she's like, a princess, dude? Like, I don't even, what if I don't wanna be a princess? Like, what? And then, guys, we have this very weird scene, which when I first read this, 
I was not a fan, which is where he rips the guy's heart from his chest. I get it. I get it. He's so strong and so powerful and so cool, so he can totally do that. But if I saw that, guys, I would run away. I get it though, like I totally do. It's supposed to be romantic and you know, if you say anything bad about Poppy, I will kill you and I'm gonna do it fashionably in front of everybody. But when I first read that, I was like, no, please stop. Another thing that Poppy deals with besides learning the truth about Castile is also learning the truth about the Ascended and everything that she's been told being a lie. You know, she's been told that being ascended is an honor and being given as a third daughter, I think it's third, not second, I think it's third, um, being given to the gods is an is a honor and when in reality, they're literally being given to the temple for the ascended, aka the Vampire, to eat them. Then we move on to a little bit more into the bonds, like I mentioned in my last video. I was very curious about that because I was getting weird vibes between Kieran and Poppy, like, it was just weird in that bathtub scene. I was like, what is going on? So we don't get much at this point, but I did highlight that because I was like, that's weird. And then we learn about Hawk. We learn about why Castile chose the name Hawk, and it turns out that his name is Castile Hawk Throne Denier. Do you ever wonder, like, why an author chooses a name? Like, do you think that she chose Hawkthorn instead of Hawkthorn because Hawkthorn is too popular? Like, do we think she was trying to be different? Which is totally fine if she was. I, I love that for her. But, hmm. But anyway, I guess they say that if you know someone's middle name or if you call someone by their middle name, that means you are extremely, extremely close. And... Um, you know, it's another way of him saying, like, I went into it as another person. It wasn't who I truly was. Blah, blah, blah. And he also does say, like, listen, like, I am the dark one. I, I have done horrible things, and I'm never going to lie to you about that. I, you know, well, again, I have done bad things, and I can't change those things, and this is who I am. Like, I can't make you want me. Which, again, is hard, because... You're like, what? Like, I don't even really know you. Like, I thought you were this amazing guy, and now you're really this horrible person? What? And he says to her, I am Hawk, and I am Castile. I'm not two separate people, no matter how badly you want to believe that. And then we kind of get into kind of more of the story. So essentially, he was locked up with the Ascended and was tortured and assaulted very horribly. And then we learned that he basically like took his brother's place. So the, the brother came to rescue him and they got exchanged and he was kept barely alive horribly. It was really bad. And then we kind of get into this moment where she's like, well, why don't you just make me marry you? Like, why don't you just make me do all the things you want? And he says, because I may be a monster, but I'm not that kind of monster, Poppy. And can we talk about something for a second? Because this kind of irritated me. And I don't know if, if it's just because, again, I'm still in like a slump or what, but I'm kind of getting annoyed. This is kind of reminiscent to like dark romance, how people that read dark romance are like, well, you know, he, di he does bad things, but he also has had bad things done to him, or he does something really good for other people, as if like that's an excuse. And it's not an excuse, and I'm not saying that Castile is using it as an excuse, but it's just kind of like this thing where we're supposed to feel sympathy for you. And I feel sympathy for what he went through. I feel sympathy for his brother. I don't feel sympathy for the fact that he lied to her. Sorry, dude. You didn't have to lie. You did to yourself. Like, you had to lie because you were trying to get your brother back. But you didn't have to hurt her. You chose to do that. Which he knows and he fully admits and takes responsibility for. So I'm not saying that I don't, I hate him. But it's just like, does anybody else kind of get annoyed about that? Like, ugh, like, yeah, he does horrible things, but he's actually hurt or he actually is a good guy. Like, 
This is why I can't read like heavy romance books because there's always an element of that and it just doesn't do it for me. And there are some really good lines about how Poppy could never go back to the Ascended to be used to make more um, Ascended because that, that's essentially why they want her so bad is because she's Atlantean and they can make more Ascended from her. And she says, I'm not a bottle of wine. And he says, no, you are not a bottle of wine, Poppy. Like that's a good, it's so good to like finally have her kind of think like, okay, I'm not going there. Like even if it, you know, even if I'm with you and you still are gonna give me to them, like at least I could probably escape quicker than if I was still there in their grasp. We get a couple weird like flashback moments of when she was back with her brother and her parents. A lot of it is are heavily um, relived that night they were killed. I think at, at this inn, we get some weird information. We get a really weird like poem. Um, what a pretty flower, what a pretty poppy. Pick it and watch it bleed. Not so pretty any longer, poppy. Weird. Weird. We also get this really interesting scene where Delano basically busts in Poppy's room and is like, I heard you calling for me. And she's like, I wasn't calling for you. And he's like, yeah, you are, I heard you. And she's like, no. I really like Delano, by the way. You know, I'm a sucker for side characters and I like him a lot. Yeah, at this point we're learning a lot of lore, a lot of different things. She's even thinking about Tawny, who was her like, basically her, her handmaiden from the first one back in um, Solus. And she's like, dang, like, is she okay? What is going on with her? And I'm so curious about her. And I'm in the third one, like I said, and I still haven't seen anything from her. So I wonder, wonder what the deal is. And then we get to a point where Castile has basically gotten so tired of Poppy saying things like, you are just like the Ascended. You are no better than them. And he's like, you have literally no idea what you're talking about. So he takes her underground to this tunnel where it's basically this giant memorial for everyone that has been killed. And that's not even like a quarter of the people. And she's like, wow. And he's like, yeah, like, do not compare me to them again, please. Like, it is, no. Then we get to a point where Poppy is like, okay, I guess I'll marry you. <laughs> she says, I have to see for myself what he has become, her brother. So that is the deal. I will temporarily marry you and help you free your brother if you help me free mine. And he says, okay. Or he says, I agree. And she says, okay, sorry. And then we get a line about the bond. Kieran says, we were bonded at birth, and the connection is a lot of things, Penelope. What does that mean? Oh, and then we meet Alistair. Alistair is such an interesting character because he's written in a way where you really don't know whether or not to trust him. Like you do because he basically was like a second father to Castile and Malik and he seems to really love Atlantia and he reminds her of Victor, but there's just something off about him. And I always felt that way reading this book and considering like what happens at the end, which I'll get into, oh, I have thoughts. Again, more lore about King Malik and how he created the first Vampire. Castile is kind of doing this weird thing with Poppy where he's like, like they're kind of hooking up kind of and they're pretending and that's so annoying because you're not pretending, you're lying to yourselves. And that's what's annoying for me is because it's like, why? Why do you have to do that? I get it, it's the drama, it's the, you hurt me and I can't be with you and I've hurt you and I'm ashamed of myself but I still want you and I still want you so let's just like be together but let's not actually be together. That never works out, guys. And it doesn't, so. And then we kind of get some lore and more information about the past and the different creatures in the forest on their journey back to Atlantia, and they run into this group um, that are basically like these wild people that just live in um, the, the woods, and they attack them, and yeah, it is, um, very interesting. Castile does have some good lines. Um, you know, he's getting shot with these arrows 
and he's like this is getting extremely annoying and he's like tearing them out and tossing them and then he looks to Poppy and he's like don't get shot that will be even more annoying and he just says it's so dry and it's just so funny and during this we also kind of get to see Castile's power it says that he jumps like so many feet in the air and lands on a tree and jumps and you're like oh my god essentially like Atlanteans are vampires they're just less bloodthirsty and they can actually control themselves and yeah Another line I liked is on page 275, and it says, Beauty, my sweet child, is often broken and barbed and always unexpected. And then we get some really weird information about Shea, who was Alistair's daughter, who we assume is dead from this point. And um, apparently she was Cass's lover, and Kieran is like, don't bring up Shea with Cass. That is a road you don't want to travel with him, ever. And so now I'm like, hmm, what happened with her? I don't love other women drama, so. And then we get to a point where because Castile was injured and he hasn't been eating, AKA feeding, he is very sick. And basically we learn about how if an, if an Atlantean really, really cares for someone, AKA is in love with them, that they can't feed from someone else they find it like absolutely like disgusting and so then poppy lets him feed from her they have this really weird like spicy moment after i don't know if this whole feeding thing is my thing guys like i just don't know if i like it i'm kind of leaning towards no but i'm also kind of like okay i just don't know and then we have more pretending, more banter, which is great. Um, and then Castile teaches Poppy how to ride a horse. And Kieran says, dear gods, you have her on her own horse? Soon she'll be running one of us over instead of stabbing us. And that's another thing that's continued in this book, that whole stabbing thing, because, you know, she killed him at the end of the last book. Um, yeah, so she loves to stab him, and he loves it too. And we meet a couple more characters. We meet a character named Beckett, who is this really, he's not young, like by Atlantean standards, but he doesn't look older than like, you know, a teenager to Poppy. And his name is Beckett and he ends up breaking his legs and Poppy heals him, like actually heals him. Not just feels his emotion, she's able to heal him. And this kind of like wows everybody, wows herself. And she doesn't realize how insane that was because she doesn't even know how she did it and everyone else around her is freaking out they're like oh my god and then she learns what a soul eater is so i guess people from her bloodline that also did what she's doing now like healing i guess they could also basically eat people's power and people are scared that she's gonna do that and Cass is like why are you thinking about that like you just healed him and you're worried about that like stop like oh just let it go and then we get to the point thank god where they're like okay we're in love um no more pretending let's just be together cool awesome with me i'm fine with that kind of you know i'm fine with her like still don't know how i feel about him it's just one of those things where i don't know if i just like just don't care enough right now but i don't know like i've accepted it so I'm gonna move on. We do see a lot of guilt from Castile. You know, he says to her, and truthfully, I have no idea how you can even bear my touch after my lies, after what I did and caused. And she basically is comforting him like, you know, you can't change what you did. You were doing it for your brother. Like I would do things for my brother. I would do things for my family. Like you can't beat yourself up on the past. We just have to move on. And then we learned that I guess Castile was actually promised to another girl. Her name was Gianna. She's Alistair's niece. So at this point, not only was Castile supposed to marry his daughter, Shea, I forgot to mention that. Shea is his daughter, but now he's also sp like supposed to marry Gianna, his niece. Suspicious. It's like, why are you trying to connect yourself so heavily to the crown? And then all hell breaks loose when they find the Duchess has brought the Duchess of Solace from the first books. I think it's Solus. I might, I might be wrong. I'll correct myself if I am. But anyway, she brings a bunch of soldiers to basically attack them in Spessa's End, which I think that's where they are. Ooh. And um, basically, she comes bearing gifts. 
she comes with the heads of Magda, who's pregnant, so they killed her pregnant, which is awful, and Elijah, and one more that I cannot remember, and I'm so sorry. But poor Elijah, poor Magda, I mean, I can't even believe that they did that, and oh, it's just so sick because they ended up winning. Like, Poppy literally destroyed them all. So we do get really epic, you know, battle scenes and whatnot, which is great. I personally love that. And they end up killing the Duchess, which is really satisfying. And then we move on to just more lore, more talk. Um, I forgot to mention that Kiernan, God, I keep saying his name wrong. Kieran mentioned earlier that he thought that Poppy and Castile were heartmates. I won't lie. When I saw the word heartmates, I wanted to throw up a little bit because it just kind of like didn't hit for me. Like I get what she's trying to say. She's trying to say mates, but she doesn't want to say mates because she wants to be different. But like heartmates just, just doesn't do it for me guys. But I've accepted it again. I've accepted it. I moved on. And so she basically asks Castile like what are heartmates? And then he tells her it's basically again like mates, like you're mated, your souls are one, blah blah blah. Um, I guess there are heartmate trials that the gods used to hold in order for you to really prove that you were mated to this person. They don't do them anymore because the gods sleep, but we get all of that information. Okay, now we're getting to the end, which is where this gets really good. So basically they travel through the mountains to get to Atlantia in the mountains. I can't remember if it's the the Skodos Mountains. I think that's what it is. Basically, the gods would put this fog and this mist all around the mountains and it's like magic to basically veil Atlantia, right? And if you got through it, great. And if not, then you went mad from the fog. And basically Castile and Kieran are like, listen, when we go in here, you're gonna stay with us, you're gonna go to sleep and you're not gonna move. And does Poppy listen? No. Was it her fault? No. The magic got in her mind, basically made her stand up and she has this weird vision of this woman. And this woman is basically like, why are you here? Like, go home. So she sees this woman and the voice says, no farther. What you seek is not to be found here. She says, stop, go home, take what is yours and you will find what you seek there, the truth, go home. It's like this weird veil of a, it's like a woman. Um, she's like outlined, but she can't see a face. It's really weird. And then she ends up getting to almost falling off a cliff and Castile and Kieran catch her and they're like, oh my God, like, what are you doing right now? Like, oh my God. And she's like, dude, I didn't even know. I'm so sorry. But she tells them like, I had this weird, like this weird fantasy or I saw something weird and they're like, it wasn't real. Don't worry about it. They get to Atlantia and this is when it goes down. So basically they get there and Castile's parents are not there. And Beckett is like, Beckett, the young wolf, he's like, oh, let's go look at the temple while Castile goes and deals with some stuff. And Poppy's like, okay. So then he goes there and there's this weird vibe, like weird energy. I actually did record myself like at this part on my tablet, which I'll put in here or I'll put it at the end. But, um, and I'm like, I have a bad feeling because it's just so weird. It's just weird, like the energy. And then he says to her, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I really appreciate that you healed me. Like as almost, like almost as if he was like, you know, saying he was sorry or like, you know, it was just like a weird vibe. And Castile like tells her before she leaves, he's like, I'll come for you, like I'll find you. And I'm like, oh my God. And not to mention that Castile also had a dream in the mist, the crazy mist that Poppy was in a cage that Poppy was being held captive. And so I'm like, oh my God, I have a horrible feeling. Like, what is going on? Essentially, Beckett had betrayed Poppy. Our sweet Beckett had betrayed her. And um, the people of Atlantia are not happy with her. And they start stoning her. And she tries to talk to them. They don't want to talk to her. And, um, yeah, and so without even realizing it, Poppy's enraged. Like, she's so upset, she ends up, like, somehow 
basically taking control of their bodies and like contorting them and like basically she kills them all which good because they were trying to kill her and then poppy basically distorts their bones and basically kills them which is fine because they were trying to kill her um i can't imagine seeing that scene like l played out live it'd be so awesome to see that but um and then King Valen and Queen Elowana, Castile's parents, show up and all of the Wolven and so many other soldiers and the guard and she's like, bow. Bow before, you know, your queen. And Poppy's like, what? And Castile is like, oh my god. And not to mention it's raining. So this is like so cinematic and I really, really loved this scene. And yeah, and that's basically how it ends, is her saying like bow and everybody bows and Poppy is like, oh my god, what is going on? Oh, I also think it was raining blood. Not even water. So imagine that. So yeah, that's basically the recap. I really liked it. I liked the end, mostly. I do think the pacing was good. Again, that's something I liked in the first one. I didn't feel like I was waiting forever to get information or get like dialogue or banter between Poppy and Castile. I really liked that. Again, like I didn't like the back and forth with the feelings, but it's almost like I can't even be mad at that because like of what happened in the first book, you know, they're both kind of deciding whether or not they can be with one another because of the things they've done and the things that they have had done to them. And I think that's just kind of how love works is like, even though people hurt you or even though you hurt someone, that doesn't mean you don't love them. Like, I struggle with this because I am a firm believer in that. Like, if you really loved me, you wouldn't have done that to me. But we had to keep in mind that he didn't love her at the time. Like, he wasn't in love with her. Like, he had a job. Like, he was doing something for him. And she thought, oh, well, I'm finally going to go to Solus and, like, become this thing that I need to become and see my brother and it just so happened that they paths intersected um, I mean obviously it wasn't like just so happened like he did that on purpose but it's just crazy how those things work because you're two separate people and then you come together and it's like oh my god like he didn't expect her she didn't expect him and now they're in love and he hurt her horribly and this is why I can't this is why I like don't love reading romanticy because things get complicated it's really good like i know akatar and throne of glass have like romanticy too but those are different to me because i don't know i think just because i've spent more time with them and they're like there's more books that like throne of glass feels so well developed like my favorite series ever in terms of romance and enemies to friends to lovers like i think it is so well done because there are so many so i don't know if it's that like i said before in my last video i think it's just it's hard for me to care and like get attached to people when I just met you. But anyway, I really liked it and I can't imagine not having the third book after reading this because that is such a cliffhanger. Like, wow, like you're telling me that she kills those people with so much power, everybody bows to her and Castile is shook. He's like, oh my God. And then you think to yourself, is he mad at her? Like, is he gonna forgive her? Because she shows up to his home, his land, and kills them. That doesn't make her look good. And the king and queen, his parents, like they've never even met and they walk in on her looking at these people who she just killed. Oh my God, it's crazy. So yeah, I, I have more thoughts, but that's kind of all I wanted to say for now. Um, I'd love to keep talking in the comments if you have more thoughts or concerns or just anything you felt. I'd love to talk about it. Let me know and I will definitely reply. Next video will be um, Crown of Gilded Bones. I Like I said, I'm like halfway through that one, a little bit more than half. Um, so I'll kind of make a video updating you guys on where I am now and then I'll just kind of vlog throughout my... Um, throughout finishing it. I will upload that and we'll go from there. There is one more book in the series, um, A War of Two Queens, so I assume that's Poppy and then Queen Ileana from Solus, I think, the main queen. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm excited to kind of get, you know, get it done and kind of move on to other books. So yeah, let me know what you think down below and I'll see you guys next time, okay? Thank you so much for watching and like I said, if you have anything to say, comment down below and I'd love to talk, okay? See you next time, bye.